This is the first in a series of videos where I will give you some tips about how to render uh, an elevation. Now, this elevation is way longer. It extends beyond the view of um, the camera here. But what I'm going to render here can be applied or the techniques can be applied or just replicated um, across to uh, the other windows that you can see and the other pieces of wall, the other light, etc, whatever. So I'm going to focus on this section and give you some rendering tips. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is block in the large area of colour. Now, I have decided that this wall is going to be a, quite a dark grey colour. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to block out the large areas. Okay, so I start, as I always do, with uh, just my lines. And part of that is to counteract the bleed. Now, I'm just going to go that far. So we did this with our plans as well. The idea here is that um, we try as best we can using this technique of putting a line the whole way around the area that we want to render so that it holds the marker we put inside those lines. And I'm going to step this in here because I'm going to put a little kickboard here which probably should be there anyway. So I'm going to keep going around all the objects now with the light just putting it underneath I'm not putting it above because I'm leaving that a little bit lighter so that I can show or demonstrate that the light is shining on the wall. And when it comes to rendering around you know something that's maybe quite small or detailed here I'm just going to block in the colour here. I'm going to go around that small chair. Now you may remember in some of the other videos I go through this same process in um, rendering a floor plan. But sometimes it feels a little bit different when you're doing it for an elevation. And even if I go over the lines of the chairs here, um, I can rectify that later on. So don't be too you know, hard on yourself when it comes to you know, blocking in large areas of colour. The key is really just to do it. And then you've started the process, if you like. Okay, so oh, I've got a bit here on the top of the kitchen counter. Now, so what I'm going to do here is just quickly block in those large areas of grey colour. Now remember, we don't mind the lines. The lines give the end product a little uh, dynamic feel. And if, you, if you're not a fan of the lines, you can take them out um, using pencil at a later stage, so there's no real issue. And this wall is quite dark. And this is the first coat. I'm going to go over it again with a second coat of a slightly different colour grey. Now you can see what I've done there. Now I'm coming down the wall line. And I'm kind of fading out as I hit that light because it'll be easier for me to render in the light and shade afterwards if I do it that way. Now that's, I think, as far as I'm going to go. I've got my line here as well. Yeah. So there you have your first coat blocked in. Now ideally here uh, you want to let this dry. So what I'm going to do now is um, I am going to block in the colour of the windows. 
Now you can put the windows in in whatever color suits you and this may be relevant to whatever your color scheme is. So you can block in from a blue to a blue green to a very light grey so it's barely perceivable or perceptible and um, so it's entirely up to you but I'm going to choose to use this grey green marker Winsor & Newton grey green and um, because I think it gives a nice sort of a depth now first of all I'm going to go just around the edges here like that and to show the bit of glass that we can see beyond the blind Now these are critical windows and I'm going to be rendering those in in black anyway so I'm not too fussed about the marker going over them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this down like that very simply. And even though the lines have gone onto the window frame that's not the end of the world. Now what I'm going to do here too is I am going to line around the windows. You may remember me saying um, during the video about rendering glass. For some reason around the edges of the glass it seems to be darker. Now, and I've decided that the light is going to be shining in from the top right hand corner. So perhaps this side of the pane of glass may actually just be slightly darker or at least give the impression of where the sunlight is coming from. And I'm going to go under the blind as well. Like that. And I'm going to leave that side but I'm just going to do the above bit here too. Now, and that's sufficient for the moment. Um, I can amend that as I please as I go along. And I just want to see how dry this is because I want to give this its second coat. Okay, now this time, the first time I used a very dark grey marker. Um, uh, I think it's a cool grey, it's an ice grey. That's an ice grey 4. Now this time I'm going to take a warm grey 5. And I'm going to go over it. See, this wall is actually very dark. You know, the good thing about elevations too is what it does is it shows you your vertical space. Okay, so it shows you what's happening as you look at the walls. And sometimes when you get too stuck into your plan, you forget about this. And when you start to put your elevations together, you realise that certain things maybe aren't going to work. It's also a good place to figure out your colour schemes. Okay, so here goes. I'm going to give this a second coat. Okay, so we're going to go quite dark. I'm going to take uh, the finer nib and then just run my kickboard in there.
Okay, so there we have our second coat. So that is how you render in large areas of colour onto an elevation and how you render in glass.